What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another video dealing with quadratic formula. So what we gotta do, solve these equations here with the quadratic formula. So this is gonna be a series of a few videos where we're gonna go through different scenarios where we're gonna be solving these equations. Now, as I mentioned in the overview video, for these solutions for these, I'm gonna have them as exact values. So if there are square roots, I'm gonna be simplifying the square root expressions, but then also at the end, I'll give the decimal values in case your teacher just wants you to give decimal values. Some teachers may require you to simplify the radical expressions. So for example, like if you got root 20, simplifying that to root four, root five, which would be two root five for example, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna do those steps as well for the solutions that we get from that quadratic formula. But if you're not covering that, you could just skip that portion and go straight to the decimal answers. So let's start off with part A. We got AX squared plus 37X plus 20 is equal to zero. Now, just as a quick review, whenever you have a quadratic equation, so you have a standard form quadratic equaling zero, well, the solution to that is always going to be x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, and that's going to be all over 2a. That's the quadratic formula. So applying this here, notice what is the a value? It's 8. The b value is 37. The c value is 20. So plugging everything in, we'll have x equals negative b, so negative 37 plus or minus... 37 squared minus 4 times the a value of 8 times the c value of 20. That's going to be all over 2 times 8. So we'd end up with negative 37 plus or minus. Uh, 37 squared would give us 1,369 minus 4 times 8 is 32 times 20 would give us 640. And then that's going to be all over 16 like that. And then here we'll have negative 37 plus or minus 1,369 minus 640 would give us 729. That's going to be all over 16. And then the square root of 729, it's nice because it's going to be a smooth value. It's going to be 27. And that's going to be all over 16 like that. Okay, so we're going to end up here having two different solutions. So either x can be negative 37 plus 27 over 16, right, if we use the positive, or we can have negative 37 minus 27 all over 16, like that. So two different possibilities. So negative 37 plus 27 would give us negative 10. That's gonna be over 16. This here simplifies to negative five over eight. So that is one of these solutions right there. And then this over here would be what? Negative uh, 64 over 16, which would give us negative four. So in this particular case, the two solutions are actually smooth values. They're not um, decimals. Okay. Well, this one is a decimal, but when I say decimals, it's not uh, a continuing decimal. Uh, it's not, it doesn't contain a radical function within the solution, right? So they're actual smooth values. And if you took this, this, whenever there's smooth values like this, it means that it actually factors. And if you took this and factored it, I think it would factor into x plus four. That's where we would get this solution and then you'd have 8x uh, plus 5 like that. Okay, so this quadratic would factor into those and that's where you would get the solution. But again, we're not doing it. We're not solving these equations by factoring. We're solving it with the quadratic formula. Then moving on to part B. So we got 3x squared plus 5x equals 6. Remember, quadratic equation, you want everything to be on one side, so you have a zero remaining on the other. So the six, I'm actually gonna bring over, so we'd end up with three x squared plus five x minus six is equal to zero, like that. So notice here, the a value is three, the b value is five, the c value is negative six, like that. 
so taking these, plugging them into the quadratic formula, I'm actually going to start it over here. So we'll have negative b, so we'll have negative 5 plus or minus b squared, which would be 5 squared minus 4 times the a value of 3 times the c value of negative 6. And that's going to be all over 2 times that a value of 3. So we'd end up with negative 5 plus or minus, this would be 25. And then this would be negative 12 times negative 6, which would give us positive 72. And that's going to be all over 6 like that. And then we'd end up with negative 5 plus or minus root 97 like this. And then that's going to be over 6. And then this root 97 here, it actually doesn't simplify any further. So we would leave it like this for the exact values. If you try to take root 97 and simplify it, you can't take 97 and divide it by a rootable number. You can't divide it by 4. You can't divide it by 9. You can't divide it by 16. You can't divide it by 25, by 36 etc, etc. You want to try to see if you could take this value, split, uh, divided by a rootable number, so then you could have the rootable number here, and then whatever's remaining, and then this would end up being an integer. Okay, but root 97, it doesn't simplify any further. So the two solutions here are going to be either x equals negative 5 plus root 97 over 6, or x is negative 5 minus root 97 over six like that. And then if you wanted to get the decimals, these would be the two decimal values that you would get. And I rounded those to two decimal places. So as exact values, those are the solutions. As decimals, those are the solutions right there for part B. And again, you could take these values, plug them in. And if you do into the original equation, you'd notice that the uh, left side, when plugging in those X values, it should be something very close to six. The less you round those values, the more closer to six you're going to get here on the left side when you plug it back in. Okay, so that is part B. Now part C, uh, so again, same thing. Let's bring everything to one side. So we have the 4x squared here. I'm going to bring the 20x over. That'll become negative 20x. Then we'll have positive 25. That's going to equal zero. So in this case, a is 4, b is negative 20, c is positive 25, like that. Uh, so then taking these, plugging them into the formula, we'll have x equals negative b, so it'll be negative negative 20, uh, plus or minus b squared, so we'll have negative 20 squared minus 4 times the a value of 4, times the c value of 25, like that, that's going to be all over 2 times the a value of 4, like that. So let's see what this simplifies to. We'll have positive 20 plus or minus, this would be negative 20 squared is 400, minus 4 times 4 times 25, that would give us 400 as well. This is going to be an interesting case here because notice we end up with 0 under the square root, okay? And whenever that happens, it means that there's only, whenever you get this zero here, we're gonna talk about this in a separate video, but whenever you get that, that means there's only gonna be one solution because you're gonna get a zero here, so this plus or minus is gonna go away because it's gonna be like 20 plus or minus zero, which is always just gonna be 20. Okay, so whenever you get a zero here, there's only gonna be one solution. If you get something positive, then there's going to be two solutions because then you're going to have to add or subtract that value. And then if it's going to be negative, then there's going to be no solutions. Again, we're going to explain that in a different video a little bit further, but I uh, thought I would mention that ahead of time. So in this case, we just end up here getting 20 over 8, which simplifies to, we could divide everything by 4, 5 over 2. Like that. And what this means, what happens when there's only one solution? Well, it means that this here was a perfect square trinomial. So this actually, if you factored it, it would factor into 2x minus 5 square. Right? That's what that means when you get one solution. Right? And that's where the 5 over 2 is coming from. It's coming from this factor. All right, so that is part C. And then finally, Part D, 
um, what do we got? 2x squared minus 9x plus 5 is equal to 0. So it's already in that format that we want. A is 2, B is negative 9, C is 5. So taking these, plugging them into the formula, x equals negative B, so negative negative 9 plus or minus negative 9 squared minus 4 times the A value of 2 times the C value of 5. That's going to be all over 2 times the A value of 2 like that. So we'd end up with 9 plus or minus 81 minus uh, 4 times 2 times 5 would give us 40. And then this is going to be all over 4 like that. So we'd end up with what? 9 plus or minus um, 41 over here, root 41. That's going to be all over 4. And this here, this root 41, it actually doesn't simplify any further because we can't take the 41 divided by a rootable number. It doesn't divide by 4, doesn't divide by 9, 16, 25, 36, et cetera, et cetera. And then 49 is above that, right? So that there would be the final format. So the two solutions end up being 9 plus root 41, and that's going to be over 4, or 9 minus root 41, and then that's going to be over 4 as well. And then if you want to get the decimals, those would be the final decimals right there for both of these. Right? So just a couple of examples where we're using the quadratic formula. Over the next couple of videos, we're going to do a bunch more examples, different situations that you may run into, and more practice potentially taking these roots that you get here and then simplifying them and then getting more simplified exact values. Right? So make sure you watch those videos.